and that's the other piece about this game, Ryan, mm -hmm. is, and we're being a little bit repetitive because I know you and Vince talked about this yesterday, but I, I wanted to talk about it. A lot of the things that led to your strengths aren't there anymore. You know, Notre Dame was who they were because of having a, the best tight end in college football. Well, he's not there. How does that impact your ability to go do what you do? On the other side of the ball, part of what made South Carolina's defense be sort of that that boomer bust group, that high risk, high reward team that plays a lot of cover one and takes a lot of risks and 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 does all those things was you had two really good corners. We actually had three really good corners. Two of them are gone. They're going to the NFL. And you know, so you look at different aspects. Notre Dame. What's one of the keys that we would have had in this game? Looking at it right when the season was over, with everybody that you know still on the roster. Boy, you got to get after the quarterback. They're not a team that really protects the quarterback that well. This quarterback is one of the worst in Power Five when it comes to how he performs when pressured. And boy, Notre Dame's got an All-American defensive end. Well, he's not there anymore. You know, uh, tight tight end. It's a big part of that South Carolina offense. They throw to the tight ends a lot. Two of their three are gone. Right? There's just so many aspects of this. Josh Van, is he going to play or not? You know, he's he's been healthy. There's so many aspects of this game where what you were during the season is not there anymore. And I think that right. adds to the difficulty of, I mean, we're going through these, these games and, and, you know, I'm, I'm having a, we're making predictions at Irish breakdown. So today we have predictions for Florida state, Oklahoma. And then we also had predictions for Texas and Washington. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking my gut reaction for that prediction of the Texas game was completely different. Once I started breaking the game down, because there is no B Sean Robinson anymore. There is no Rashawn Johnson anymore. He even opted out, you know? So mm -hmm. then it's like, well, Okay, well, I don't know what this Texas team is now because they're they're, they're what made them who they were what when they were good this year. What made them that team is gone. Does right. that mean other guys step up or not? That's what's so fascinating about this is this is where your breakouts happen in these games, right? This is where your 220, 2023 team is going to start to have its stars identified in games like this because the stars that were there already are gone for mm -hmm. a lot of teams. Now that's not true everywhere. I mean, Bryce Young and Will Anderson are playing this ball game. Huge props to those two kids. They have no, they have nothing to prove in these mm -hmm. games. Nothing, and it says a lot about them that they're playing. Love it, love it. Notre Dame. I mean, Isaiah Foskey opted out. My, Michael Mayer opted out. I don't think Isaiah Foskey made the right decision. I, I think Michael Mayer did. I, mm -hmm. Michael Mayer only risks hurting himself in a game like this, right. literally, mm -hmm. by playing in a game like this. I still think Isaiah Foskey has a lot to prove. I mean, you even advocated he should have not only come back for the bowl game, but next season at Notre Dame, but it is what it is. But Jarrett Patterson's still playing. That's huge, right? You're not going to have Cam Hart, who's injured, but you you get Tariq Bracey back from injury. Sounds like Brandon Joseph is going to play in this game. So Notre Dame didn't have a lot of opt-outs in this game. Uh, Drew Pine, obviously, but that's because he wasn't guaranteed the starting job, right? And he probably wouldn't have started even if he would have stayed. You know, South Carolina lost the two corners, lost Zach Pickens along the defensive line, lost their two tight ends, lost Marshawn Lloyd. And so you look at these two teams and you're like, man, they, these are just going to be two completely different looking teams. Who steps mm -hmm. up? And that's going to be one of the fascinating storylines of this game. Who steps up with Michael Mayer out? Because if nobody steps up, Ryan, they're not going to win this game. And Or if they do, it's going to be like 17 to 13, right? Somebody's got to step up for Notre Dame. Who steps up along the defensive line with Isaiah Foskey out? You know, which veteran caps his career off in impressive fashion? And the same thing's going to be true if we were doing this from a South Carolina standpoint. Who steps up with, you know, because like the tight ends were banged up against, was it Clemson? And, and Nate Atkins steps up and makes some big plays in that game, right? Mm -hmm. Coaches, one of the coaches' kids, right? So he stepped up in a, in a big moment. Who does that on defense for South Carolina in this game? Who does it in the pass game on for South Carolina in this game? This is what makes this such a fascinating, fascinating game to, to prepare, prepare for and a hard game to predict, to be completely honest yes. with you, Ryan. I mean, I feel like most of the games, to your point about the Texas Washington game, like a lot of these games are really hard to predict because it's because you're using, look, we're film guys, obviously, right? So we're going to watch film and then we're going to use the statistics and, and things to back up what our eyes are seeing, right? You showed some of the statistics already, but the fact that your two leading rushers for South Carolina aren't playing, your two best tight ends aren't playing, your two best cover men on the back end aren't playing, your best defensive lineman isn't playing it kind of makes those stats 
void a, a little bit, you know, like it doesn't hundred percent matter because it's not built upon what you've been during the season. So we're left to just the film. And the problem is that when you're watching the film, you're seeing Marshawn Lloyd run the football, right? You're seeing Jaheim Bell in the passing game. You're seeing Cam Smith cover the team's best receiver on the other side. So it is a big question mark. It's a big wild card. I'm sure South Carolina has some dudes. I know, you know, yesterday on the show, that Vince was talking about their other corner that's still playing in his football game that he likes him. And I'm sure that they're going to have a few kids. Antoine Wells obviously is their best receiver. Like they're going right. to supplement in different ways and they still are going to have some talented football players. There's no doubt. So you're not going to come sleepwalking into this game. It's just so difficult to predict right now what a team's going to be. You know, like we talked about Notre Dame for a couple of weeks, Brian. It's like, okay, you don't have Michael Mayer, but that gives you the opportunity for. Tobias Merriweather, right. right back healthy. Deion Colsey. Deion, bingo. Right. Be it, like, so the, game, the passing game is going to look different, but it could still be really successful. It's just going to be different. Different isn't always a bad thing. Right. It's just different. Right. But the fact is, is that we're, you're playing with two teams here in this bowl game that you're not 100% sure what their identity is. You're not sure who they are as a football team. You know South Carolina won their last two football games against two pretty good football teams in Tennessee and Clemson, but – Again, they're not 100% the same team that they were doing those games as well. So it's going to be fascinating to watch just how much different they look or how much they stay the same and that they just have guys that step up a little bit. Here's another aspect of it. How mm -hmm. much of those victories, and this isn't meant to take anything away from South Carolina, but it's part of the conversation, right? How much of those wins were about them playing well, which to a degree it was, and then how much of those wins were about those teams not playing well? You know, they beat South Carolina by one point in a game where their starting quarterback went eight of 29. Eight of 29. You know, if Cade Klubnik gets put into that game and plays the way he did in the ACC title game, South Carolina is seven and five, and Notre Dame's got a different opponent in this game. Right. I mean, that's just the reality of it. But they didn't. They did make those plays. They did step up. They did take advantage of DJ having an off game, and they were part of the reason he had an off game was because of the tight coverage and – and then making him throw into tight windows, and he's not good at throwing into tight windows, right? But then you look at the Tennessee game, and, and you know you, you you look at what happened there. That was an implosion of a locker room divided, all this kind of stuff. It doesn't take away from the plays that they made. It right. just kind of it, it's like that's what this game is about, right? It's like Tennessee was kind of trending in one direction, and South Carolina took advantage. Oh, and props to them because that was a week after they got annihilated by Florida. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't speak enough about how good of a coaching job that was, and and. I don't know about the leadership at South Carolina because we don't cover South Carolina. Mm -hmm. But I would not be shocked to find out that there is good player leadership to, to see a team. You know, Tennessee has all the reason in the world to go to that game excited and fired up and ready to play. They're in the top four. They're a playoff team. And they're having these internal locker room struggles about NIL and all this other nonsense, right? South Carolina's lost two out of three, just coming off getting their absolute tails beat against Florida. And you'd have thought South Carolina was the team playing for a playoff spot in that game. Mm -hmm. And it's Tennessee was the team ready to implode and didn't want to be there. And it just says a lot about what I think Frank or Frank Beamer, Shane Beamer's building there and, and why I think they will be ready for this game. That's the, mm -hmm. that's what it comes down to. That's why I think South Carolina will be ready for this game. They have shown they will, they can handle adversity. They've bounced back from some bad losses this year. Uh, they've bounced back from, losing streak this year like Notre Dame had early in the year both of these teams had early uh in the season two game losses now of course n one of them was equal I mean they Georgia beat South Carolina Notre Dame lost Ohio State of course Georgia beat South Carolina very badly but then that also fought that followed a loss to Arkansas well, of course Notre Dame had a second loss which was much uglier losing to Marshall right but they both bounced back you know, you go out and get beat by South Carolina 48-7. Then they got to play Charlotte the next week, blow them out. And then they have to play South Carolina State on a short field, a short week because of the hurricane that was coming at the time. And then they went on the road and beat Kentucky. And then their season was kind of back on track, you think. And then they lose two out of three to Missouri and Florida. And sandwich in between that is a not overly impressive road win over Vanderbilt. And you're like, well, how's this team going to respond? They're six and four. They're fading. And then, boom, back-to-back -back top ten wins. So I can assure you South Carolina will come to this game ready to play. Yep. There's no doubt. They will be ready to play. They, this isn't going to be one of those, well, they didn't want to be here moments. Well, they will be ready to play. Brian, we talked about it yesterday. I mean, can you imagine how high this South Carolina team is going to feel going into the going into the offseason if their last three wins over Tennessee, who was ranked in the top four, 
ranked against uh, play against Clemson, beat an in-state rival, and then beat Notre Dame in a bowl yes. game. Like that is yes. that's a nice little resume to yeah. finish off. You had nine and four. Yes. Your last three wins are at that magnitude. Like you're feeling good about yourself going right. into next season. Right. I mean, and you want to talk about names during the season, they would have also earned a win over Texas AM. Mm-hmm. That's another name program. Now they're not good, but it's a name program. That's a program they're trying to overcome on the recruiting trail to get this thing going. Yep. So, yes, you are 100% right. They will be ready to play, and it's a big game for Notre Dame, too. I'm more concerned about whether or not Notre Dame is ready to play than I will be South Carolina. Mm-hmm. And that's not a saying that I'm concerned about Notre Dame. I'm just saying there's more reasons for Notre Dame to overlook South Carolina than the other way around. 